Welcome back to Sportsline here on News Channel 5 Plus. John Burton with you until the top of the hour. Again, your phone calls are always welcome here. Your thoughts on the Titans playoff game against the Cincinnati Bengals. This is our last chance to uh, talk it up before kickoff on Saturday. Of course, uh, again, you can watch the game 3.30 on uh, News Channel 5, and then immediately following the game, we'll be live with post-game coverage from Nissan Stadium, uh, interviews and analysis uh, throughout the, the evening uh, as we go along there. Titans-Bengals, Saturday, 3.30, over on News Channel 5. All right, before we went to break, we heard from King Henry, the Titans running back, Derek Henry, as he is poised to come back uh, from his injury uh, this Saturday against the Bengals. And, of course... The guy that has to figure out how many carries is he going to get? How many times will he touch the ball? What kind of plays are they going to draw up for him? Well, that's Titans offensive coordinator Todd Downing, who met with the media earlier this morning. Here's what he had to say, not only about Derrick Henry, but about facing the Bengals' defense. Obviously, the still, you still have a couple more days to go this week, but how does it look like Derrick handled uh, you know, the, the thudding that he got yesterday in pads? Yeah, I think he's been progressing well. You know, certainly he's done everything we've asked him to do, and, you know, that'll be a decision uh, left to, you know, people above me on the food chain. But, you know, I think things have been progressing, uh, you know, encouragingly. How do you start the week knowing that he's back in the fold? How to distribute the carries, how much he can handle, and will some of it just be determined on how he does in the game? Yeah, you know, I, I think we... We've talked a little bit throughout the course of this year just about load management and how it's it's tough to sometimes put a finite number on things. And, you know, I think that, you know, if I'm given uh, the green light with Derek playing, then we're just going to have to monitor him in the game. And, you know, Coach Dews does a great job of keeping an eye on his guys and rotating those guys through anyway. So uh, probably have a lot to do with the flow of the game. Is that hard, Todd, when, you know, here's a guy who's used to 20, 25, even more carries per game. Uh, to kind of get in rhythm, is it hard to figure out what number would, would be right, you know, assuming you can't give them that amount? Sure, I think everybody's wired different, you know, and I think that uh, I think that different runners have different styles and kind of see the game a little different with, with more touches. Um, but, but again, I think the flow of the game will kind of dictate that. It's hard to go into it saying, okay, we're going to give them this many and then give them a break, you know, it kind of uh, depends on the situation in the game, so... Obviously, uh, what kind of advantage could it be to have that potential three-headed monster with Derek and uh, Trump Deontay? Yeah, you know, anytime you can have playmakers back into the mix, uh, it's a good thing. You know, more ingredients is uh, makes for more fun than the recipes. You know, so uh, excited, you know, about the potential of having that that three-headed monster and uh, you know that that kind of uh, versatility. And uh, we'll see how it unfolds if if the opportunity presents itself. What have you seen from the Bengals and maybe what kind of a challenge do they present? You know your offense yeah playing with a lot of confidence you know uh, certainly they're a versatile group you know if you just look at things from a, a broad picture standpoint there are a whole bunch of different coverages and tags and fronts and all that uh, so you have to do your best to, to boil it down you know and uh, I think they do a nice job of making things look the same uh, certainly disciplined and well coached so uh, we have our work cut out for us not sure Trey Hendrickson is going to play yet or not but how big a difference has he made for that defense this year yeah certainly uh, you know as an attitude and, and a demeanor guy that, that is a leader on that defense and, and brings it every snap you know uh, his stats speak for themselves but he plays hard and, and uh, certainly is uh, one of the motivating leaders on that defense how much is Taylor maybe I don't want to say back to himself but since the early season stuff with the knee and the cramp and all that. How much you feel like he's the guy he was before all that? Yeah, I think as a whole, as an offense, we're starting to see a little bit more consistency, and uh, that's all we can ask for is just you know being the same player each day. Uh, you know, I think we've we've had every player on our offense go through some patches where maybe they didn't look quite you know like they uh, expect themselves to, or we do. But uh, I think we've been growing each and every week. Tannehill talked about uh, the edge rushers yesterday, Bengals, the challenge there. It's always important to protect the quarterback, but up against this defense, just how much more of an emphasis will it be going against the Bengals? Sorry, I didn't take a little drink there. Um, yeah, it's certainly, it's always uh, something that we're aware of. You know, you have guys that uh, are talented edge rushers on just about every defense we play nowadays. Uh, and, and we need to make sure we take care of the, the edges uh, so that Ryan can, you know, 
obviously progress downfield and have enough time to step up in the pocket. So uh, we have a plan for that each and every week. They have a couple of talented guys, but it's not the first team that we've played that, that has. So, um, you know, hopefully we can execute the plan as well as we have uh, in recent weeks. With Okunjobi out now on IR and the, the injuries they do have on the defensive line, does that make it maybe tougher to, to, you know, do you prepare to see those guys or do you also have to look at some of the guys that have stepped in over the season? How do you plan for that? Yeah, they have some versatile pieces. So I think you need to look more at the structure maybe than the personnel. Uh, you know, obviously we had three quarters of a game's worth uh, you know, of the playoff game against the Raiders to kind of uh, take a peek at some things. But uh, overall, we got to let our rules be our rules and go in our one-on-one -on -one matchups. With guys like A.J. Brown and Julio Jones, you know, receivers that you want to get involved early, how do you go about balancing that, whether it's scripting or just trying to make sure that everybody gets their touches and they're involved and kind of tuned into the game? Yeah, I think it's a process. You know, as you set the game plan in the early parts of the week, uh, you want to make sure that you have some things where the guys look at, look at the game plan and say, oh, yeah, that, that one's for me, you know. Uh, and I think that's important. And then certainly you want to find ways to be versatile uh, early in games and, and make sure everybody's in tune and involved in the game. Um, you know, but a lot of that also unfolds as you see what they're trying to do to you uh, schematically in their game plan. You know, and you say, okay, we're getting a lot of this coverage. Now we can go to this counter punch and, and so on. So what are some themes, Tom, that you guys had as you sort of self-reflected, you know, during, those, during that off week? Uh, Maybe a theme or two that you tried to work on, especially. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, I think we've grown throughout the course of the year, and I think one of the things that was really encouraging is you kind of saw progressions in some areas, you know, and uh, we did become more consistent in some things. But we're just scratching the surface of of you know where we want to be as an offense and where we want to go as a football team and doing our part and getting us there. So, uh, you know, I, I think there was a, a little bit of a balance between okay, these are some schemes we can rely on and have executed well and have improved upon uh, and then there's some leaving some meat on the bone and missed opportunities so uh, certainly hungry would be a, a way that I would describe uh, you know that bye week uh, leaving us. Mike, Kevin Byard have been among the guys who kind of talked about being wary of the idea hey everybody's back we've got number one seed we're home but have you guys have you had any conversations about that hey we can't you know think that everything's set up yeah, luckily I think our culture here has been such that we expect people to go out and execute at a certain level regardless of who they are and what their name is. And so when that uh, when that expectation doesn't fluctuate with the personnel that's in there, it makes it easier to then uh, you know hold those people to a standard when they come back. Um, you know, I don't think anyone here is real comfortable, and I think uh, we've done a nice job. Uh, of challenging ourselves, uh, you know, to try to look for ways to improve, and and certainly no one's gotten fat and happy. We've left far too much meat on the bone to be fat and happy. So offensively, for us, there's a long way to go before we reach that level of consistency we're looking for. Uh, you know, and and I think that that leaves us um, a, a long ways away from ever being content. That red zone scoring efficiency that seemed to spike over those last three games. What were some of the things that you guys did well to to cause that improvement? You know, sometimes I. I think that's a, an area of situational football that can be a, a little bit streaky and sometimes it has to do with confidence and so it can snowball sometimes in a good or, or a bad way. We finished strong and, and certainly that's been a strength of our offense around here uh, for the last few years is you know uh, ranking pretty high in that touchdown efficiency but again I think in a game by game basis you just have to uh, have great detail and great uh, you know full uh, all-encompassing takes all 11 mentality down there to be able to go execute and, and produce uh, in the red zone. Todd Downing, Titans offensive coordinator, speaking to the media this morning, talking about his plans, such as they are for Derrick Henry and the Titans offense going up against the Cincinnati Bengals defense uh, in the AFC divisional playoff game. Let's go to the phones right now. Kevin joins us. Good evening, Kevin. Uh, nice to talk to you, sir. Yes, you too. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of stuff in the media over the last couple of days, and I think they consider the Titans to be somewhat of a, a joke. And, like, the Bengals are just going to come in, whitewash the Titans, and move on to whoa, the whoa, 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 Kevin. Where, 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 Ke hang on, Kevin. Where, where are you seeing that? No, uh, I'm certain of sports channels that might start with ES 
and uh, they're they're considering the Titans to be like a, a joke, and I, I found it laughable because simply the, the Titans are a good cohesive team, and I like that Coach Grable. I think I've seen uh, a lot of media with, uh, uh, especially that interview with uh, Derrick Henry. How he's like, well, you know, I'll just see how it goes, and we'll just see how it goes, and the coordinators and stuff. Well, and I think the big well, Kevin, they're, sand, they're sand, very big surprise. Hang on, Kevin. They're, you know they're sandbagging, obviously, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah Kevin, Derek yeah. will play on on Saturday, so rest assured. Of course he will, and and I just uh, don't like the disrespect that the team is getting. They're the number one seed in the AFC that's fought through a very tough season that I don't think any team has ever had in probably 20 years. And I just hope that Coach Grable is showing that on the big screen in the locker room and pointing to it and says to the team, this is what they think of you. This is what they think of you, and they're going to well, they're going to go out and crush those Bengals. Ke- Kevin, let me let me jump in for a second here. Um, Absolutely, sir. This is the this is this is the playoffs. You are two wins away from going to the Super Bowl. If you're not motivated, if you're a Titans player and you're not already motivated. Who cares what they're saying about your team in Bristol, Connecticut? You know, the Bengals are a popular pick. They're, become, they're an up-and-coming team. Um, you know, they're a team that a lot of people haven't seen do well in a long time, 30 years to be exact. This is the first playoff game they won in 31 years. And, you know, they've got, they've got a hot young quarterback. And the Titans have always been lightly regarded. And, um, you know, that's been the case. They're not a national team. They don't have a national following. Um, you know, so... If I'm a player, I don't need I don't need if I'm a Titans player, with all due respect, if I'm a Titans player, I don't need Mike Vrabel to say, Hey, look look what they're saying about you on ESPN, they're disrespecting you. This is the playoffs, man. I got a chance to go I to the meant, Super Bowl. I, that I am gonna be I am gonna be as I'm gonna be as motivated as humanly possible. And who cares what somebody on a network TV show is saying about me or my team? Honestly, John, I was being a little flippant with that comment because that team and that locker room, they're, they are a team. Uh, that There is nobody that thinks that I'm better than you, you're better than me. They're a team. And that goes to the coaching staff. And that comes with the head coach. Absolutely. He's been around for a long time. He's played in championships. He's got a couple rings. And he's trying to tell these guys, listen, we can do this. Just believe in each other. And they've done it for the last two years. And there's no way... They're going to lose that game on Saturday. All right, Kevin, from your lips to God's ears, I guess. We'll see what happens on Saturday. Thanks for calling in, buddy, okay? I appreciate you taking my call, sir. All right, there he goes, Kevin. Kevin all fired up. Somebody jump in where he left off. We'll take another break, and we'll come back, and we will replay in its entirety Steve Lehman's conversation with a rising star for the Tennessee Titans, inside linebacker David Long, Jr. Stay with us here on Sportsline.